أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم وهو أحسن القائلين وأصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم for the purification of the souls, the enlightenment of the hearts, the acceptance of the deeds and for the hastening of the reappearance of the awaited Savior, Ajr Allah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif, enlighten your souls and the atmosphere with the recitation of salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. <clears throat> Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Respected elders, sisters and brothers, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Lady Fatima bint Asad is the mother of Amir al-Mu'mineen wa Mawla al-Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi and a great individual in Islamic history a lady who's unique in so many ways the recognition that we find when we study her biography and her life is that she is one of four of the mothers of the Ahl al-Bayt who is known as Fatima who had the name of Fatima. This name was beloved to Ali Muhammad. Without a shadow of a doubt, she also stands out as being the first individual who is from Bani Hashim to marry another from Bani Hashim, a first Hashimite to marry a Hashimite. Similarly, she obtained praise from the Messenger of God. الرسول الأعظم والنبي الأكرم محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد In which the Prophet of Islam would call her my mother The Prophet loved Fatima bint Asad And he praised her for her excellence, her devotion, her dedication throughout her life when you look at the lady Fatima bint Asad Rudwanullahi Ta'ala Alayha, one thing that immediately comes to reality is the fact that her father Asad was the brother of Abdul Muttalib Rudwanullahi Ta'ala Alayhim Ajma'in. So you find that she would marry her cousin Abu Talib. Asad, the brother of Abdul Muttalib, both are the sons of Abd Manaf who is the son of Hashim. That is why she is known to be one of the Bani Hashim. The realization emerges, and that is she was raised in a household of nobility, tawheed, and monotheism, just like Amina bin Tawahab. And she worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah alone. This household remained steadfast and strong in the face of idolatry, in the face of polytheism, when it came to society in 7th century Arabia, in Mecca and in other places, whereby they had practices such as the burial of girls. This was something that Fatima bint Asad had to endure and see in her own eyes. People that she knew would bury their own daughters. This practice was something that indeed would emerge due to the practice or the way that people saw some of their daughters betraying them. Some of their daughters, for example, from Bani Tamim, one daughter was captured, captured in a battle, and she would remain with the enemy and would not come back with Bani Tamim, one of the tribes in Mecca. Bani Tamim decided that every girl they would have, every daughter, that would be born, they would bury. And some of the people in Arabia began to practice the same thing. Yet Fatima bint Asad alayha, was raised in this household, protected from such practices, and it gives us a contemporary lesson. Today, some of the youth say, we are facing hardships, difficulties. 
There are movements like the LGBTQ++ around us that is influencing us, that is making us do things that perhaps we do not wish to do. There are pressures in universities, schools and colleges to have relationships that should not take place. When it comes to the likes of Fatiba bint Asad, she and any others within the circle of those who remain steadfast would protect their faith despite being in a society like Mecca, despite being against all odds in a society that was filthy, yet they remained pure. Fatima reached an age whereby she would need, she would want to get married. And of course, there would be one person who would propose to Fatima, and that is the uncle of the Holy Prophet, the Mu'min of Quraysh, Abu Talib, sallallahu alayhi. And what is interesting about the biography of this lady is that when you study her and understand her, her marriage with Abu Talib is one of the evidence that the Ahl al-Bayt have used to show that Abu Talib was a believer. Please understand this. Because till today, there is a major disagreement in the Muslim world, isn't it? Many of us will recognize that the school of Ahl al-Bayt comes categorically establishes the very fact that the belief in the Iman of Abu Talib is a red line for you and I. Do you agree? <clears throat> that we would never give up the notion that Abu Talib was a mu'min. He was a Hanafi. Hanafi is a, an expression given to people like Fatima bint Asad, like Abu Talib, in the recognition that they used to worship Allah and Allah alone. Yes? Today we find that many Muslims come forward and would fight to establish their belief that Abu Talib was a disbeliever. I remember in Mecca al Mukarrama, in the area known as Shu'ub Abi Talib, in a cemetery known as what? Mu'alla, where Abu Talib sallallahu alayhi is buried, Abdul Muttalib, Hashim, Abd Manaf, these great forefathers of the Prophet are all buried there. I remember going there to perform ziyarah of the grave of Abu Talib. When I stood there to perform the ziyarah, one of those guards that was standing there wearing what? wearing the dishtash, looked at me, the religious police, and said, why are you here? I said, I am here with a few other hujjaj. We're here to pay our respects to Abu Talib. He says, if you're here to pay your respects to Khadija, no problem. But Abu Talib, do not, because he is in hell. I said, I have a request from you. He said, what is it? I said, I want to make a supplication, and I want you to hear this supplication. If you agree with the dua, I want you to say, Amin. He said, very well. I raised my hands. I said, Ya Allah, I, Muhammad, want to be raised on the day of Qiyamah with Abu Talib. And this man raised him on the opposite side of Abu Talib. He said, Amin. Very comfortably. The recognition that emerges is that Fatima bint Asad is a proof that Abu Talib was a believer. What do you mean? Imam Zain al-Abideen al-Sajjad, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, <clears throat> was once asked, was Abu Talib a Muslim or not? Imam alayhi salam responds in a narration. He says, Wa ala Abi Talib aw ala nabi I'm surprised. Are they attacking Abu Talib or are they attacking Rasulullah? Why? Here it goes on to say, وَقَدْ نَهَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَتَزَوَّجَ أَوْ تُزَوَّجَ يُقِرَّ مُؤْمِنَةً مَعَ كَافِرَةً فِي غَيْرِ آيَةٍ مِّنَ الْقُرْآنِ Allah has made it forbidden for a believing lady to marry a disbeliever. This is where in chapter 2, verse 221, وَلَا تَنْكِحُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنُوا Allah says, make sure that you do not marry the disbelievers until they become Believers, until they embrace the religion of Islam. Imam Zain al abidin is saying what? He's saying you believe that uh, Fatima bint Asad was a believer, yes? Fatima bint Asad was a Muslim. Because today Muslims all come forward and say, and they've nearly come to a consensus that she was the second female to embrace the religion of Islam. Second female to support the messenger of Islam. Some say she was the 11th person to support the messenger. If she was a believer, when she was a believer, she was still married to Abu Talib, yes? She was still the wife of Abu Talib. 
The Quran says a mu'mina cannot be married to a disbeliever. How is it that the Messenger of God would allow Fatima to remain married to Abu Talib if Abu Talib was a non-believer? This is indeed an indication that the Ahl al-Bayt had to clarify this misconception. In fact, Amir al-Mu'mineen wa Mawla al-Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salam alayhi. <clears throat> Listen to this response when someone once passed by him and saw him giving advice to people. He said to him, Anta bil makan alladhi anzalaka Allahu bik. You are in a great status. Allah has honored you. Wa abuka yu'adhabu bin nar. And your father is being punished in hell. This is found in Amali of Shaykh al-Saduq. He responds, Faqala lah, may Allah cause you and your mouth to have what? To shut. Because you are saying things which are wrong. Then he says, وَالَّذِي بَعْثَ مُحَمَّدًا بِالْحَقِّ نَبِيًّا I swear by Allah who sent the messenger of God as the truthful prophet, لَوْ شَفَّعَ أَبِي فِي كُلِّ مُذْنِبٍ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ لَشَفَّعَهُ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ Listen to this. He says, I swear by Allah, if my father Abu Talib would intercede for every sinner on this world, Allah would forgive them all. Then he says, Abi, you adhabu bin nar, wabnahu qasim nar. My father is, is punished in hell, and his son is the one who divides who goes to hell. Do you think that is acceptable? How can you accept such a thing? Then he goes to say, وَالَّذِي بَعْثَ مُحَمَّدًا بِالْحَقِّ نَبِيًّا إِنَّ نُورَ أَبِي طَالِبْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَيُطْفِئُ أَنْوَارَ الْخَلْقِ that the light of Abu Talib on the day of Qiyamah would extinguish the light of all the creation of Allah except for the Ahl al-Bayt, yes? And he says, لِأَنَّ نُورَهُ مِن نُورِنَا His light is from us, the Ahl al-Bayt. And that's why Fatima bint Asad would be delighted to marry Abu Talib in this wonderful celebration in Mecca al mukarramah The sermon of Abu Talib was similar to the sermon of Abd al-Muttalib when he married his son Abdullah with Amina. Full of praise of Allah, full of recognition of monotheism and the worship of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of this marriage, how many children did they have? Fatima bint Asad, how many children did she have? Her oldest son, his name was Talib. He died three years before the Hijrah. Narrations point to the fact that he was also a believer, but he hid his Iman, yes? And Quraysh poisoned him. Quraysh killed the oldest son of Abu Talib and Fatima. Likewise, what do we find? Aqil ibn Abu Talib was the second oldest son of this great lady. Aqil is a great individual. Sadly, Bani Umayya sought to tarnish his reputation. Time does not permit us to go through his life. But Aqil was someone who was praised by the messenger. Because one day, Amir al-Mu'mineen said to the Holy Prophet, Do you love Aqil? He said, I love Aqil for two reasons. One, because of Aqil. And two, because of his father, Abu Talib. Aqil was an individual who later would speak to Muawiyah, would converse with Muawiyah. Muawiyah says to him, you saw my army and the army of your brother Ali in Safin. Tell me about it. He says, when I saw the army of my brother Ali in Safin, I remembered the army of Rasulullah. They spent the night in ibadah and worship. Everything about them reminded me of the army of the Prophet. When I saw your army, I remembered people who wanted to kill the messenger of God. But then the Prophet, when he praised Aqil, would cry and would say that his son would support your son, O Ali, and would be slaughtered. Muslim, Ibn Aqil. Likewise, another son of Fatima is Ja'far al-Tayyar, salamullahi alayhi. Yes, Ja'far al-Tayyar was an individual who was praised by the Ahl al-Bayt. Ja'far al-Tayyar attained martyrdom in the Battle of Mu'ta, year 8, after Hijrah, and he was known as the one who had wings in paradise. The fourth son of Fatima was Amir al Mu'mineen. Peace and blessings be upon him. And she also had two daughters, one of them by the name of Umhani. Umhani was beloved by the Holy Prophet. He loved her. It is said that he started his journey of Isra from the house of Umhani in Mecca. Yes. 
And she was one of those who testified to the fact that Fadak was given to Sayyidat Nisa, Fatima al Zahra, by the Holy Prophet Muhammad. <clears throat> we are told that this particular lady would what would be the individual honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And truly one of her greatest moments is when she gave birth to the commander of the faithful inside the Kaaba, no doubt. Today, when you speak about Fatima bint Asad, you remember that wonderful sight. That honor from Allah to give birth to the second greatest human being, Ali ibn Abi Talib, in the greatest place on this earth, al Kaabatul Musharrafa, Fatima bint Asad, indeed would be honored by Allah to give birth to the only human being ever to be born inside the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in narrations that are considered mutawatir by the likes of whom Al-Hakam al-Nishapuri. He says, وَلَقَدْ تَوَاتُرَةِ الْأَحَادِيثِ عَلَى وِلَادَةِ عَلِيَّ بْنَ أَبِي طَالِبْ فِي جَوْفِ الْكَعْبَةِ Hakim, yes, he has al-mustadrak ala sahihain he has this book in which he extracted narrations based on the same principles of Muslim and Bukhari. He comes forward and says, it has reached a level of tawatur, authenticity with no doubt, that Fatima bint Asad gave birth to Ali ibn Abi Talib inside the Holy Kaaba. What was the story? Narrations tell us that Abu Talib saw her in the state of wanting to give birth. She was in labor inside her house. He said to her, would you like me to bring some of the ladies of Bani Hashim to help you? She said, very well, whatever you wish. When he brought some of the ladies of Bani Hashim, he heard a voice, Abu Talib, do not allow these ladies to enter because there is a special delivery waiting for her. He sends them back. Then she goes to the Kaaba. I ask you, a lady who's about to give birth goes to the Kaaba just by her own willing, just by her own desire, or was she communicated to? Was she an individual who was given a signal to go to the house of Allah? Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib says, I saw her performing tawaf around the Kaaba. When she finished the tawaf, she stood between what? An area known as Mustajar and the door of the Kaaba. And she raised her hands and said the following, Rabbi, إِنِّي مُؤْمِنَةٌ بِكْ Oh Allah, I am a believer in you. وَبِمَا جَاءَ بِهِ مِنْ عِنْدِكَ الرُّسُلِ And what all the messengers and the prophets have brought before you, from you. وَبِكُلِّ كِتَابٍ أَنْزَلْتَ And every book that you have revealed. وَإِنِّي مُصَدِّقَةٌ بِكَلَامِ جَدِّيَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْخَلِيلِ I believe in whatever my grandfather Ibrahim came to deliver. وَأَنَّهُ بَنَا بَيْتُكْ He built this Kaaba. Al-Atiq. Then she raises her hands. Listen to the dua of Fatima bint Asad radhwanullahi ta'ala alayha. Al-Mu'mina, al-Sabira, al-Taqiyya. Al-Naqiyya. This lady says, فَأَسْأَلُكَ بِحَقِّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ وَمَنْ بَنَاهُ I ask you for the sake of this house and whomsoever built this house. وَبِهَاذَا الْمَوْلُودِ الَّذِي فِي أَحْشَائِي and by the sake of the baby that I am carrying, الذي يكلمني ويؤنسني بحديثه, the baby speaks to me and keeps me company, and I find it pleasurable speaking to him. This is found in numerous works. Shaykh Tusi, Shaykh Saduq. A number of historical works narrate the words of Fatima in those glorious moments. She says, وَأَنَا مُوقِنٌ مُوقِنَةٌ أَنَّهُ أَحْدَى آيَاتِكَ I believe that he is one of your signs. وَدَلَائِلُكْ لَمَّا يَسَّرْتَ لِي وِلَادَتِي Ya Allah, I ask you by all these things, make my delivery easy for me. The moment Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib says she finished this dua, we saw the wall of the Kaaba crack and she entered. We then rushed towards the door seeking to enter the Kaaba. We find that the door was locked. We could not open it with the keys. We recognize there is a special time and a special miracle that is about to happen. People gathered. 
Fatima bint Asad did not come out for three days until she emerged. But how did she come out? From the door? No. She came out from the same crack. The wall of the Kaaba would crack once again. And she emerged from it carrying a young baby, raising the baby. People around her were astonished. She began to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped me and I have given birth to this young boy inside the Kaaba and I was fed from the fruits of Jannah. Somebody asks, why was the Kaaba wall open? Why did she not go through the door? People usually enter the Kaaba through the door. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the birth of Ali ibn Abi Talib inside the Kaaba to be what? To be known as a miracle. So that generations speak about this fadila of the commander of the faithful. If it was through the door, people would say it was a normal occurrence. She went, she opened the door, went inside. It was not something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to happen. And even today, 1400 years later approximately, anyone looking at the Kaaba will not deny this birth. They want to seek to, to somehow hide it and it emerges again. They want to hide it and it emerges again. There is a message from Allah. You cannot hide the miracle that my servant Ali was born in my house, the Kaaba. That you cannot hide. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to be preserved and it will continuously be preserved until the day of Qiyamah. And what is interesting is that Fatima, when she came out, she presented Amir al-Mu'mineen to the Holy Messenger. Amir al-Mu'mineen, according to Riwayat, had not opened his eyes in those three days. The moment she was, he was given to the Holy Prophet, he opened his eyes. Rasulullah said something amazing. He said, خَصَّنِي بِرُؤْيَتِهِ وَخَصَصْتَهُ what? بِالْعِلْمِ He chose me to be the first person to look at. I chose him to give him my knowledge. There are interesting narrations that we found what that is by Sunni narrators, Yanabi al Mawadda, he narrates that Abu Talib and Fatima wanted to see what is the name of this newborn baby. So they went to Jabal Abi Qubais, they raised their hands and said, Ya Allah, grant us from you a sign so that we know what would we name this young baby. The narration tells us that they immediately saw a green scripture, Lohun Akhdar. Please understand this. And on it, there was a lines of poetry. It says, zaki. I have given you a pure son. Al the pure one, chosen one, pleasing to Allah. وَإِسْمَهُ مِنْ قَاهِرٍ Ali. And his name is from the all-powerful, almighty. Aliyun ishtuqqa min al-Ali. His name Ali has been given and taken, extracted from the All High. This green tablet was then placed inside the Kaaba and remained there for over a hundred years until Al Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al Thaqafi alayhi Allah removed it. Yes, people saw this miracle and the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had named whom? Had named this particular holy individual. Yes, Fatima bint Asad was also a person who paid much attention to the Prophet of Islam. Why? Because at the age of eight, Abu Talib salamullahi alayhi takes the Prophet and looks after him. He says to Fatima, look after him because he is more worthy for me than my soul and my wealth. She says, oh Abu Talib, he is more valuable to me than my soul and my children. And thereafter, she begins to look after him much more than she does for her own children. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Kanat Fatima bint Asad min abarrin nasi bi Rasulillah. She was amongst the most virtuous individuals 
to the Holy Prophet and listen to what the Prophet of Islam says about her. In At-Tabarani, it is narrated that the Prophet says, Rahimakallahu ya ummi. May Allah's mercy be upon you, O my mother. Kunti ummi ba'da ummi. You were my mother after my mother. You were hungry and you fed me. You made sure that you clothed me. You were tired but ensured that I was looked after. You wanted the pleasure of Allah and what? And success on the day of Qiyamah. And that's why there was no hesitancy on the part of Fatima bint Asad to what? To support the Messenger of God. To stand with the Messenger of God when it came to declaring the fact that he has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the final and the greatest of messengers. There was an incident which was very interesting. This was the story of Abdullah ibn Jadhan. Abdullah ibn Jadhan sees the Prophet of Islam one day in Mecca. He sees him and, and says to him, what is it that you're looking for? He says, I'm just walking and absorbing the atmosphere. He says to him, come, let me give you food. Abdullah ibn Jadhan was from Quraysh. The Prophet of Islam, after eating from with him, said to him, I invite you to come to my house tomorrow and bring your family. The Prophet was living with Abu Talib and Fatima bint Asad. When he went to the house of Abu Talib and Fatima, he entered and he was worried. He had his head down. Fatima immediately came to him, said to him, Ya Muhammad, why do I see you in the state of distress? He said, I have invited a lot of people to come to eat tomorrow. She said, then why are you worried? Leave it to me. I will arrange everything for you. Abu Talib heard this. He said, you are the apple of my eyes. We will arrange and support you. And we will feed them like no other individual has fed them in Mecca. That's why she remained steadfast and strong until it was time to migrate from Mecca towards Medina. Fatima bint Asad remained in Mecca when the messenger of God went to Yathrib, went to Medina. Until she was taken by her own son, Amir al muminin together with three other Fatimas, or to at least two other Fatimas, yes? Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her, and Fatima, the daughter of Zubair ibn al Awam. These three Fatimas would accompany Amir al muminin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them in the Holy Quran. Sadly, time is nearly over, but we mention one of her Fadail, chapter 3, verse 191. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there are those who reflect on the creations of the heavens of the earth. Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batilan subhanaka faqina adhab al-nar. Narrations tell us it was the three Fatimas and Amir al muminin when they went from Mecca to Medina, migrated, they remembered Allah whilst they are walking, whilst they are sleeping, whilst they are sitting. And Allah praised them. This ayah was revealed in their merit. Imam Sadiq says the first lady to migrate from Mecca to Medina in foot was Fatima bint Asad. She walked. Imagine, yes? Imagine the dedication. Imagine this honorable lady, how hard she worked to serve the Prophet, to serve the religion of Islam. And that's why in the year four after Hijrah, yes, four years after coming to Medina, she before that attended the marriage of Sayyidatul Nisa with Amir al muminin She would witness the birth of Imam al Hassan, peace be upon him. Yet on a day, Amir al muminin comes distressed, says to the Prophet that my mother has died. The Prophet says, No, my mother has died. Innaha ummi, yes. Then he says to the ladies, Wash her body. I give you my outer garment, wrap her with my outer garment. Then don't do anything. When he came to perform Salatul Mayyit on her body, he recited takbirat 40 times. This is in Sunni and Shia narrations. 40 times he recited takbirat. Then he did something he had not done with any other individual. Yes? He went and slept in the grave of Fatima in Jannatul Baqi. Yes? Then when he placed her, yes, narration says that he prayed for her. And when the grave was filled, this interesting narration is found. What do we find? We find he began to speak to her and says to her the following, Ibnuki, Ibnuki, la ja'far wa la aqeel. Your son, your son, not ja'far and not aqeel. 
later the Prophet was asked, Ya Rasulullah, what was this that you were doing? We have never seen you do anything like this. He says, Fatiba bint Asad used to ask me about the journey of Akhirah. She used to ask me about death and barzakh and the hereafter. I said to her that there will be the what? The pressure, fishar al qabr, the squeezing of the grave. I said to her on the day of Qiyamah, people will be resurrected naked. She said to me, Ya Rasulullah, help me. Do something for me. And that's why I covered her with my own cloak. I slept in her grave so she would not in any shape or form, what? She would be protected and would not feel any pressure. And when I prayed 40 times takbira in salah, it was because of 40 rows of malaika who behind me were performing salatul mayyid for Fatima bint Asad. And finally, when I said to her, your son, your son, she was being questioned by the angels who asked her, who is the wali, who is the imam? I said to her, say to them, your son, your son, not Ja'far and not Aqil, but Ali ibn Abi Talib. That is why this great lady was known as a muhaditha. She has at least 46 ahadith narrated from the Prophet of Islam. She's an individual whom the Ahl al-Bayt say, seek in order for your hajat to be fulfilled. Because the sixth imam once was asked by somebody, how can I do something for my hajat to be fulfilled? Imam alayhi salam says, go to the Kaaba, perform a tawaf, ruk'atayn salah, then gift this act to the soul of Abu Talib, Fatima bint Asad, and Amina bint Wahab, and insha'Allah, your hajj will be fulfilled. And indeed, that person said, the moment I left Masjid al-Haram next to the Safa and the Marwa, my hajj indeed was fulfilled. When it comes to the spiritual tip for tonight, we are indeed individuals who ask many hajat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many a times we have many wants, isn't it? Ya Allah, give me this. Ya Allah, grant me this. Shaheed Mutahari, rahmatullahi alayhi, says something beautiful. Please pay attention to this 30 seconds, yes? He says, why is it that we always ask Allah to give us and we don't ask Allah to take things away from us? What do you mean? He says, we have pride. We have arrogance. Some of us are self-conceited. Maybe a dua in the month of Ramadan is, Ya Allah, remove the arrogance from us. Ya Allah, take away pride from me. Ya Allah, take the self-desire and self-love that I may have. So instead of always asking for things to be obtained, ask for things to be taken away as well. And the fiqhi aspect that we will briefly highlight and remind mu'mineen without a shadow of a doubt, and that is, if I am fasting and somebody comes to me and says, it's time for iftar, or somebody comes to me and says, I have 10 minutes left till fajr, but later it turns out that that person was wrong. So it was not time for iftar, or fajr had already started, and they told me there is 10 more minutes left. What is the ruling? There are two versions here. If it is not a person you know or don't trust much, just somebody came and told you, you don't know them, or perhaps you have a question mark over their trust, and you listen to them, according to Ayatollah al-Sistani, Hafizahullah, you have to do what? Qaba of that day. Only? No. Kafara. Kafara and qaba for that day, if you listen to someone you don't know that it is time for iftar and you broke, break your fast before actual time yes, of the Maghrib. However, if it's someone you know and you trust, yes, father, mother, son, friend, somebody tells you it's iftar time and later it turns out that it wasn't, then the ruling is you just do qaba. You do not what, pay kafara, but you have to do that day again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us tawfiq to be able to be mesmerized and inspired by these great individuals, these great ladies in the history of Islam, and indeed to attain their shafa'ah. Finally, I'd like you to raise your hands. One of the mu'mineen, Al-Hajj Hussein Bojani, elders of this community, an established member of this wonderful community of Az-Zahra is in hospital. Let's Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his shifa and the shifa of all mu'mineen and mu'minat five times 
ذي آية المباركة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله شافي وعافي مرضى المؤمنين والمؤمنات بحق مريض كربلاء زين العابدين for the شفاء of the مرضى please recite aloud صلوات على محمد وآل محمد